Today we will be covering the second activity in MATLAB and we'll mainly be focusing on how to create arrays, how to uh, do operations for those arrays and how to combine those arrays together uh, in order to form matrices and then we can do operations for those. Uh, this is a very important chapter because it will be a main foundation for everything that we're going to be doing from now on including uh, the final project for this class. So in order to go ahead and get started, we're going to fire up salt, uh, MATLAB and of course we're going to start an M file. If you guys forgot how to start an M file, uh, remember that the way to do that, we're going to go to File, New, Script, and that will create an M file. Usually your M file will end up be, you know, popped up like that. You can click on Desktop and Doc Editor and that will put it in this position. So you can see the code over here, your results will pop over here and you can see your workspace over here. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, here's an example of a vector. So some of you might have experienced those vectors and you probably uh, have seen them in uh, Calc 2 and Calc 3 especially. Uh, but the way you can think about it is, let's say you're walking in a straight line. If you're walking in a straight line, that's one dimension. Now, if you actually try to, uh, to go in a triangle form, for example, you go in one direction, which is the X, and then you go in another direction, which is the Y, uh, now you're actually going in two dimensions. If, for example, you want to go up the stairs, so now not only do you have to walk on the floor, but you also have to go in a third new dimension, that's your third dimension. So you'll see that for each one of those dimensions, we can actually show our motion and this this is our motion right this is our starting point and then we end up on the second floor somewhere right uh, this vector could be broken down into some components of the X some components of the Y and some components of the Z what does that mean in order to get to point P from point zero you had to walk some distance in the X some distance in the Y and some distance in the Z so that's why we can actually break down this vector now, in some situations, this is going to be much longer, and we've experienced that in uh, during the last lecture where we actually calculated time, and time was uh, of many more dimensions because we went from 0 to 5 at a 0 0.2 increment. So from here, we get to the point of rows and columns. So rows and columns are a way of, to represent that array, and in order to represent a row, let me turn on the magnifying glass so you can see it better here. Okay, so I'm going to place it right here. Okay, so in order to um, create a row, so I'm just going to put a con I'm going to start with CLC and clear as usual, and uh, I'm going to put a comment here on uh, row representation. Okay, um, so in order to create a row, we separate the elements of that array by a comma. So we can say R equals uh, 0, 5, 6, 5, 8. Basically what we just did is we're representing all those numbers by using a comma. We can actually get the exact same result, so I'm going to call it you know, D, by not using a comma and just using space. So for example I can say 0, space, 5, space, 6, space, uh, sorry that's a 6, space, 5, space, 8, and then you'll see that I'll get the exact same results. Now in order to represent a column, so the column is the vertical, uh, I'm going to use the letter C, and the elements are separated by semicolon. So I can say 0, semicolon 5, semicolon 6, semicolon 5, semicolon 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and save it and change that folder. And you're going to see that we get R, 0, 5, 6, 5, 8. And we get D, which is the exact same as R, right? Because uh, those are the two methods of actually representing the uh, row. Now, for the column, notice that we actually get the exact same elements, but we get them vertically. So over here, I'm going to show you another way. So since we already created a row, how can we create a conversion between a row and a column? So in order, to, in order to create a conversion between a row and a column, what we can simply do, so if I say, hey, I'm going to use um, the, the letter E, and I'm going to create an array 0, space, 5, space, 9, space, 6. So this is a row. 
Okay. Now notice what happens. If I follow that row by transpose, which is an apostrophe, that will make that row change into a column. So I don't have to put a semicolon between those elements. I can just follow a row with an apostrophe and that will change it. So this is we're changing from row to column. Okay. And I'm going to show you another example. I'm going to use the letter T and basically in this uh, in this example I have a column and by following the transpose I can actually change from column uh, to row. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this to see if it works. So we run it and we come over here on the bottom. So let's look at E. Again, remember E was that, uh, was that row, but considering we put the transpose, E is now represented as a column. And T, since it was a column, but we put the transpose, it's now represented as a row. So that should um, help you there. Okay, uh, so that's what I just talked about, and I'm just going to keep moving on. Last time we talked how we can actually use the semicolon in order to create an increment. So for example, I can say um, uh, M is my minimum value, Q is my increment, and N is my maximum value. So in this situation, if I want to create a series of numbers, I can do that, and we talked that about that in the, in the last lecture. Now my question to you is, what happens if you uh, don't know the increment? So for example, I know that I want to go from number 5 to number 10.3, but I don't really know the increment. All I know that I actually want 26 elements. Okay, so I want the size of that array to be 26. So what I can do over here, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and erase these, so we can start fresh. And what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna use um, uh, the the variable r. And for that, before we used to say, hey, I'm going from zero to five, as uh, from sorry, from zero at an increment of zero point two to five, and that will give us an array. So if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that R has 26 elements. So we know it has 26 numbers. Now what happens if we want to go from a minimum value, which is, um, let's say, 5, to a maximum value, uh, which let's say is um, 16, but I want the number of elements, so elements, I want those to be... Um, I don't know, let's say 50. I want 50 of them. Okay, but I don't know the increment here. So if you want to do it mathematically, what you'll notice is, let's take a look at R for a second. So I'm going to I'm gonna take a look at R over here. You'll see that R starts with 0, and it goes all the way to 5, and we end up with 26 elements. So some of you might have thought that you really would end up with 25 elements, but remember you have that first starting point, that 0. So remember that plus one option, okay? Because you're going to have to figure out how do you create an increment on your own. So another way, going back to this point, is in order to create an array, I'm just going to call it W, I can use the command lin space, and I can basically say it's my min, comma, max, comma, elements. And of course, you don't have to, you don't have to name those variables over here. You could have typed them here, but I'm trying to uh, help you understand what's happening. So if I go ahead and do this and I hit F5 to run it, you'll see that what I get over here is I get an array W that goes from 1 all the way to 50, so which is exactly what I specified. But notice the numbers here, the increment has been determined for me. Okay, does that make sense? And if you want to know what that increment is, it's very simple. You can just subtract the second uh, number from the first number. So if you guys remember, so if I want to find what the increment was, I can basically say I want the second W subtracted from the first W. So if you remember, that's how we call the second number and the first number. So if we go ahead and run that, we'll notice that the increment, if we want to go from um, number 5 to number 16, we want 50 elements, is 0 0.2245. Okay? So that is all cleared up, and that's there's an example here. 
that will help you understand that as well in terms of how to use lint space. In addition to that, last time we used the command length. So if you remember, if I type over here L equals length uh, length of W, we should get 50 because that's what we told we told it to be. So you'll see over here that L is 50 because those are the number of elements. So if you guys remember um, uh, back in geometry, you had to calculate uh, uh, the, si the size of the hypotenuse, right? So basically you had an X, you had a Y, and you had to calculate C, and the formula to calculate C was the square root of A squared plus B squared, correct? Uh, or a square root of X squared plus Y squared. We can do the exact same thing, but we can do that in multidimensional. So how can I find uh, the, the size of this array? Now, considering that R is, is, a, is a column, uh, sorry, uh, considering that R over here, if it's going from 0 to 5 and increment of 0 0.2, is a row with multiple columns, in order to find the magnitude, I'm going to use the mag underscore R as my variable. And remember, the, user, the reason I use underscore is to kind of show space or uh, part of. And I can say, hey, this is R. And I'm going to basically, I'm going to say square root. Okay. And I'm going to do R multiplied by R apostrophe. Okay. So what that's doing is it's multiplying rows by columns. Okay, so it's multiplying the row portion of, of R and that's converting it to a column and it's multiplying that together. So if I go ahead and run this over here on the bottom, you'll see that the magnitude of that vector is 14.8661. Alright, so to keep going over here, I show you that example over here so you guys can review that as well. Now we need to understand what are matrices. So we talked about rows, we talked about columns, but how do we create matrices? So what a matrix is, is a combination of rows and columns. So if we take a look over here, you, what you'll see is M has, this is a row, this is another row, this is another row, this is another row. So the rows are horizontal, and the columns are the vertical. So if I tell you what's the size of M, you would say it has four rows and three columns. So it's a four by uh, three matrix. Now the way we can represent this in, um, in MATLAB, I can say M equal, Okay, and if I'm going rows, remember we use space, so two space four space ten. Now I need to jump to uh, to a new. So I'm going rows. Now to, I need to jump down. So I'm going to put a semicolon sixteen space three space seven semicolon eight space four space nine semicolon three space twelve space fifteen and close. Uh, a bracket, square bracket. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that I get a matrix M, which is the representation of what I have over there. So to keep exploring with M, so I show you a couple of examples here, you guys can go through these. Uh, but to keep exploring with M, what if we want to call a specific portion of this? So what M is, if we go ahead and just double click on M here, you'll see that really those numbers are just saved in an Excel format. So uh, if you remember that in Excel, each cell has a number. So you'll see that this cell has a number 1, 1. This cell has a number, it has uh, column 1, row 2. Okay, this cell has, uh, again, row, th and, and so on. So each one of those cells has a specific address. Um, so if I go back to my code, what I can do is, let's say I want to call on this number, this number 3. Okay, so this number 3 if you guys remember, it's located in column two, row two. Okay, so in order to call on that, the way I'm going to do it, okay, and you're going to see that it's not going to be um, as straightforward in a sec, or it's going to be straightforward. So I'm going to say call and underscore three. So I'm going to call on that three, and basically it's just going to be M. Okay, and I want the second comma second. So I want M22. And if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that call three really gives me three. Okay. Now uh, let's go ahead and do one more. I'm going to say M, and we're going to call. I'm just going to pick a number for now. Let's say three comma two. 
Okay, so if I say three comma two, and again we're using uh, parentheses, not square brackets, and I go ahead and run that, you'll see that I get four. So three comma two, I'm going to uh, uh, row three, okay, column two. Okay, so I'm selecting this one. So again, it's rows, comma, columns. All right, so now let's say is in instead of just a single number, I actually want to call on this entire, sorry, I can't select it, but I want to call on the entire second column. Okay, so the entire second column. If I want to do that, so I'm going to call, I'm, going, I'm calling on column two. Okay, so that's going to equal to M. So column two, that means I want all the rows. So I use a semicolon to represent I want all the rows, comma, and I need to represent the columns, which is two. So if I go ahead and do that and I hit a five, you'll see that the second column over here is four, three, four, twelve. So four, three, four, twelve. Okay? Alright, great. Now let's say I'm actually want to call on the second row. So row two. Basically it will be M. I want the second row, comma, all the columns. Okay? Now, if I want a combination of things, so if I want, for example, just to get 3, 7, 4, 9, so 3, 7, 4, 9, I'm basically going row 2, row 3, column 2, column 3. So if I come over here, basically I can say um, mini, mini underscore matrix, maybe, if I want to call it that way. It's M. I want to go from the second row to the third row. And from the second column to the third column. So if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that my mini matrix is the 3749. Okay, so let's keep going over here. Um, there's an example for you here that basically goes through exactly what I just did. Uh, there's also the uh, how to find the length of, a, of an array. We talked about that. Now we're going to use an uh, we're going to use an option called find a. So what does what does find a do? Find a will find the address of all, or find the location of all non-zero uh, values in M. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a slight modification here. I'm going to replace this 16 by 0. Okay, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, you know, 0 equals find M. Okay, and we're going to see what happens. So if I say find M, okay, uh, I'm going to get the address, you see that? 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I get everything, the address of everything except that zero location. Okay? So, um, let's do another example if you want. Um, but, you know what? I'm, I'm going to wait until we do the matrix multiplication and that will make a lot more sense uh, when we do that in order to prove that the uh, multiplication is actually equal to each other. Okay, we can also use just like Excel the command max a. And what max a would do, so if I try to find max of m, and I just say max m, okay, so what that would do is it will find the maximum of every single uh, column. So if you remember what m was, so it will look 2083 and we'll find the maximum, which is 8. 4, 3, 4, 12, maximum is 12, 10, 7, 9, 15, it's 15. So it's 8, 12, 15. And if we go here to the max, it's 8, 12, 15. We can also use the same thing to find the minimum. Now my question to you is how do you find just the maximum number in the matrix period? So the maximum number uh, in the matrix. What I can do is I can say the max... And I'm just going to put like double x here, right? And of m, and that's just a new variable. I will basically say it's the max of the max of m. Okay, so I'm taking the max here. I take the maximum of all the columns, and now I'm taking the max of that resulting row that was here. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that, you'll see that 8, 12, 15, the maximum of that is 15, and I get it over. My question to you is, since max m finds the, um, 
the maximum of every column, how do you find the maximum of every row? Well, all you have to do is just put a semicolon here for M, okay? And it will basically invert it. And if you go ahead and run that, you'll see that will give you the maximum of every row. And you can tell because there were four rows and you end up with four numbers over here. Okay, so to keep going, we can talk about max, min, we talked about that. You guys can play around with sort and size, but size basically tells you how many rows and how many arrays does a matrix have. Okay, um, now let's talk about operations. So we have array addition and subtraction. If you have two matrices that you're trying to add to each other or subtract from each other, their sizes have to be equal. For example, if we look at this matrix here, this matrix has two rows and two columns. And we can only add it to this matrix because it has two rows and two columns. And the way that we add them is numbers of the similar address need to be added together. For example, over here, you'll see that I say uh, that 6 has an address of 1, 1. It can only be added to this number over here, which has an address of 1, 1. So 6 plus 9 is 15. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 14 plus 3 is 17. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. Okay? And the code for that is given to you over here. Remember, for your MATLAB assignment, you're not allowed to just use A plus B. Okay? You definitely want to specify a variable equals A plus B so you can avoid using the uh, variable uh, uh, ANS. Okay? Now, if we have a multiplication, what a multiplication will do is it will multiply each single number. So think about it, what you're basically doing is you're increasing the size of that vector. So if we have a matrix, then that 3 will be basically distributed to each one of those numbers, and the code for that is given to you over here. Okay, so let's get to the summary here, and you'll see that we have, these are the operations that we can use, okay, and there's examples for each one of them. We also last time talked about what happens if you want to do an element by element. So if you want to do each single option, and that's why we use that dot before each one of those operations. So you can see here uh, from those examples. We can also do, uh, so here's an example of the multiplication. What we're doing is again element by element. So 2 multiplied by negative 7. So the numbers of the similar address will be multiplied together. So 2 by negative 7, 4 by 3, negative 5 by negative 8. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. All right, so if we have two matrices, again, the same thing. It's a similar similar address. So we have... Yeah. You want that door open? Uh, no, I'm good. You can close it. Okay, have a good night. Okay. Sorry about that. Campus safety walked in. Uh, it's late. I'm trying to record this. Um, so we have A, B, and we're trying to multiply them together. So address 1, 1, address 1, 1. So we have 11 multiplied by negative 7. And then 5 by 8, 2 by 4, 6 by negative 9. Okay? Uh, now, all these operations that we learned last time, square root, exponential, could also be applied to an array, and it will be applied for every single element of those arrays. So we can use the square root option. We have an exponential, sign, all that stuff still applies, just like regular numbers. Okay? Um, all right, so exponents, more examples here for you. Make sure that you use that dot, again, when you use exponents for an array. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, matrix, matrix multiplication. This issue is uh, slightly more uh, tricky. Um, it will require for me to actually do an example on the board uh, when you come back to class. But uh, just to explain it briefly, in order for, to have two matrices really multiplied by each other, not just do element by element, there needs to be some relation in the size. So. You'll notice that this element A, right, this matrix A, has three rows and two columns. So it's three by two, and this has two by two. So considering this is three by two and two by two, the number of columns of the first matrix need to equal the number of rows of the second matrix. Okay, so the number of columns of the first matrix need to equal the number of rows of the second matrix. And that's the only way we can actually multiply two matrices together. And the way that we actually multiply them is we multiply a row by a column. So you'll notice we have 6 by 9, negative 2 by negative 5. 
Okay, now we move on to the next operations. We have 6 by 8, negative 2 by 12. And you repeat that process 10 by 9, 3 by negative 5. 10 by 8, 3 by 12. And you repeat that process, and you'll notice that you end up with a new matrix. And the size of that matrix, look at that, it's equal to the number of rows of the first matrix and the number of columns of the second matrix. So this is a 3 by 2 matrix. Okay? So this is another example for you as well. So you can practice with that. We will talk about this more in class again. But the main thing that you have to remember is unlike um, regular multiplication. So for example, if I say 2 by 3 is equal to 6 and 3 by 2 is equal to 6, uh, matrix multiplication is actually doesn't work that way. So A multiplied by B is different than B multiplied by A. And a simple way to actually prove that is if those sizes of the columns and the rows that we were talking about don't match, in some situation it can actually work. For example, if we go back over here, this is a 3 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. So if we try to do B multiplied by A, you'll notice that we can't even do the multiplication because the number of columns of B does not match the number of rows of A. So that's how you can tell that A by B is different than B by A. Okay. Now, if you have a polynomial, remember you can represent a polynomial as an array from the highest power to the lowest power. Okay, and you can uh, uh, you can do the the multiplication of uh, those uh, polynomials by using the command C O N B. So let's do an example over here. Let's go ahead and type type those arrays, and for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to copy them. Okay, so what this is saying, it's saying A represents a, polyno a polynomial, polynomial that is 9x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x plus 7. That's what this polynomial represents. This one, on the other hand, represents 6x squared minus 1x plus 2. Okay, so we're going from the higher power to the lower power. If I want to multiply those two um, those two polynomials together, all I have to do is use the command conv a b, okay, and that will multiply them together. Okay, at the same time, we talked about roots last time, so I'm not going to cover this. Please make sure that let's say this is 6x cubed plus, uh, hold on, uh, 6x cubed minus x plus 2. So considering that it's 6x cubed, so we have this. But since there's no x squared, that means the coefficient of that needs to be 0. Okay. So please make sure that you go from the higher power to the lower power. And if, if there's a power that's missing in, that, in those steps, then you need to put that coefficient to be 0. Okay. Uh, okay, so now let's say you want to specify an exact value. So instead of an array that we used before, we're going to specify an exact value. And that exact value is, um, uh, so we, I want to calculate the value of this array for x equals 5. Then I can use polyval, and I can go ahead and run that. What did I do? Oh, no square brackets. I go ahead and run that, and I get 1,022. So the evaluation of this polynomial at x equals 5 is 1,022. So that wraps up um, everything that we need from this portion, uh, including your homework. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that. So your homework is here. OK, I'm going to close this. So for activity 2.1, um, because parts A, B, and C are pretty much exactly the same, all I want you to do is just do part A, because if you can do part A, then uh, you can pretty much uh, do the rest. And you'll notice here that what I tell you is you have to use two different methods, and that's where that lin space command that we use today, that we learned today, will come in handy. Activity 2.2, you basically have to create a vector x that goes from 0 to 10 with six values, so again, using that lin space option. And then from that, go ahead and create a matrix where the first row is 3x, so 3 multiplied by each one of those, and the second row is 5x minus 20. 
Okay, 2.3, we have this, uh, this matrix, so you can actually type that matrix in. Okay, and I want you to create a vector that is the second column. So how do you pick that second column? We talked about that in the lecture. And then W is the second row. So how do you pick up that second row? We also talked about that in the lecture. Okay, now I want you to find the maximum and the minimum of every column, and the maximum and minimum of every row. And this is the same matrix, so you can copy-paste that code. Okay, 2.5. Uh, we have two matrices, A and B, and we have a couple of operations that I wanted to do. So you can go ahead and do that. This is a very important exercise, so please make sure that you spend some time on it. Okay, so let's talk about 2.6, because this is where, if you remember in the beginning, I told you we need to talk about the find command. So we have A, B, and C, and I want you to find A plus B plus C, A minus B plus C, and then I want you to prove that A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. So how can we prove that? Well, what we can simply do is if we go ahead and type a matrix. So let's go ahead and do this for a simple example. I'm going to say matrix A is, and let me open up the magnifying glass again so you can see what's happening. Okay, so for matrix A, I can say, uh, let's say it's a 2, 1, uh, 1, uh, oops, zero. And for matrix B, it's uh, seven, five, three, two. And for matrix C, it is uh, one, negative two, uh, two, two. Okay. And let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what I can say then is I can say, okay, S is A plus B plus C, because that's what I tell you to prove first. And then, so that's S1. Okay. And S2 is A plus B plus C. Okay. So I don't really care about the results here, so I'm going to put a semicolon next to it. But what I can do is I can find diff s. What you're basically I'm doing is I'm doing s2 minus s1. Okay, so you're probably wondering why am I doing s2 minus s1. So let's go ahead and run this. So you will have a, we have a over here, we have b, we have c, and look at the diff. It's 0, 0, 0, 0. So now we can prove that. They're equal to each other. But let's say this is a billion by billion matrix. So that's really hard to prove. But what I can do is I can say prove. Okay. And I can say find diff of S. Okay. So I'm finding the non-zero values. I'm finding the non-zero values in diff of S. So if I go ahead and hit F5, you'll see that prove gives me an empty matrix. That means all that matrix uh, has zeros. That's why I can prove that S1 is equal to S2 and the associated property actually works. Okay, so let's keep rolling over here. Uh, activity 2.7, um, we're going to skip that. We're not going to do activity 2.7. Okay, activity 2.8, we have a polynomial here. Okay, and I want you to evaluate it just like we did with A. Okay, so when we use poly A. And activity 2.9 is also a simple one. Don't be scared from the you know big formulas over here. All the numbers are given to you, so it's actually not that bad. But I want you to go ahead and plot the lift and drag for the airflow. So that is all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to email me and uh, let me know what's happening. And I will see you in class uh, next time. All right.